Welcome to EC Council University and Exitium's joint webinar. My name is Dr. Adaloskaya, and in this webinar, I'm going to talk about hacking trends. Currently, I work at Exitium as the Chief Information Security Officer, and I proudly say that I do hold CH EC Council Certified Ethical Hacker Hall of, uh, Hall of Fame Award. Beside that, in the past, I was instructor of the year in 2011-12 and many other awards from different organizations such as Cisco, Microsoft, and so on. This, this webinar is live, but don't worry. If you're watching this webinar at EC Council University's website or at Exitium Academy, and you still have some questions about the content or anything else, those are my contact details. Please feel free to get in touch via social media so I can answer your questions. Some of you know me as author. As you know, I have more than 18 books published so far. I can proudly say that some of them won multiple awards such as Hall of Fame, uh, best, best uh, books of all time. And um, I most of the books were in the best selling list for a long time. Besides that, they were translated in multiple languages, such as Russian, Chinese, Korean, Turkish, German, and I'm proud of that. All right. Here's the surprise for tonight. And even if you're watching this webinar later offline, I'm going to have some surprise end of the session for you. But if you're watching this webinar right now live, feel free to tweet about the session, tag me, and we're going to select five winners uh, for my ebooks. All right, let's talk about 2022. To be able to protect, predict what is going to happen in 2023. Why it's important to look back? Because I truly believe to be able to predict what's going to happen in the future, you should know what happened in the past. You should learn from the mistakes. You should implement the best practices shared. You should look at the attack vectors and see if your organization is a possible victim if the same attack happens. Let's start from Australia as Australian. There is two, I mean, there is only two telecom com telco companies, which is Telstra and Optus. And unfortunately, both of them had cyber incidents. Both of them were hacked, which brings basically uh, all 23 million people of Australia in danger. Some of them, some of our uh, private information is already still in dark web. Is this old? No. When you look apps such as Cash App, Press Reader, uh, Binance, they were all victims. This is all no. When you look at clothing companies, when you look at Uber, when you look at uh, governments, unfortunately, they were also victims. So hackers really don't care who you are, what you do, what size of your organization is. If you are a government, a corporation, or a small business, or sometimes an individual, they will do their best to get your data, capture your data, uh, encrypt your computer or steal your IP, sell it for, or ask for money as much as they can get. And it really does not matter who you are, what you use. And as you can see, um, organizations do get hacked. And that's nothing wrong with that. As long as you know how to come back, as long as you minimize the attack vectors, as long as you Look at others and learn from others' mistake and improve yourself. All right. Let's look what happened in 2022 in minute base. Yes. I'm not going to talk. We spent 2,000 minutes in YouTube or 3,000 minutes at LinkedIn or no, no. I'm going to talk about the attacks which happened per minute. Did you know that there was more than 34,700 
cost what attacks per minute. And it was not different in IoT space. There was close to 2,000 IoT-based attacks, again, per minute. DDoS, if you have a website, or if you are using a hosting company, uh, probably you notice that. I hope you don't notice, but there is more than 1,000 DDoS attacks happening while I speak right now as well. Phishing. Phishing attacks are by 80-90% still the main reason why companies get breached. And when you look at it, there is seven phishing attacks per minute. And unfortunately, uh, I think on average 72 minutes, an organization do get hacked through a phishing attack. Malware. Did you know that there is more than 18,265 malware released every minute to the wild? So if you have a technology which is just based on endpoint, which is just based on signature de based detection or behavior based detection, think twice. Is your product really good enough to protect you against those 18,000 new malware? Yes, I know. By now, you all know the importance of passwords, the complexity, the, uh, the importance of using MFA, the importance of, uh, you know, not reshare your passwords. And sometimes I do get this question a lot. They keep asking me, why? And here's the answer. There is more than 48,700 brute force authentication attacks per minute. So while we're speaking, many people do use automated tools to crack your passwords against your authentication tools. Is this all? No. If you have a database, if you have an e-commerce website, if you host uh, some sort of uh, tapping, we all are part of databases, right? Do you know that there is more more than uh, every two minutes, one SQL injection attack. And again, every third to five minutes, there is a brand new threat detected. I spoke about supply chain attack a few minutes ago. Uh, some organizations such as FireEye became uh, a victim of supply chain attack. And look, FireEye, one of the greatest cybersecurity companies in the globe, probably the biggest even they could, they did get a, a victim of a supply chain attack, which means you might be possible victim as well. So what are you doing not to be, not to be a victim? As hackers try every 35 minutes, a brand new supply chain attacks. Ransomware, we all know last year did cost the economy billions. Many organizations were victims and are still getting victims. Forget about organization. Many individuals that even I know personally called me uh, asking for help where their computer were totally encrypted and um, they were asked for seven, eight Bitcoin when one Bitcoin was costing six, five thousand dollars. There is one new ransomware attack every 195 minutes. When we put this into dollar, the danger will be more visible. Per minute, the worldwide economic impact of cybersecurity is more than $1,100,000. We, as defenders, as CISOs, spend more, close to $300,000 to be able to defend. A few minutes ago, I talked about E-commerce, SQL injection, uh, website attacks. The cost per minute of this is close to $40,000. Again, we spoke about ransomware attacks. The, the cost of it is again, close to $38,000. An average cost of a breach is $8 per minute. And again, as we spoke about m malware attacks, new malwares, did you know that an average cost of a malware attack costs $5? Here's the question. How much does your malware protection cost? 
And how much do you pay to be more secure? So any malware, anti-malware product that you use is probably uh, paying itself in less than 10 minutes, even if you use the most expensive ones. I don't want to mention the names. But instead of uh, having no malware protection and uh, paying $5 per minute, you better have a proper malware detection to help it to be more secure. All right, this is all more. Did you know that there have been more than 6.3 billion attack attempts last year? When we look at the white hacker space, the bug hunters, uh, bug bounty hunters, they earn more than $19 million in bounties. So this is not even uh, put in spending. So there are many white attackers. They do do some testing. They let, uh, let organizations know uh, of their bugs instead of hacking them. And they ask for bounties. They expect bounties. There are many bug bounty pr uh, providers such as HackerOne, uh, uh, Crowd, Crowd, yeah, there are, there are many of them. Uh, now I couldn't name them now all, but there are many, many of them. We spoke that there is more than 400,000 new pieces of malware daily. And <laughs> sad, sad uh, statistic is that you, for $1, just $1, you can buy a brand new uh, attack. You can buy a credit card. You can buy many other stuff in dark web. We talked about government-based nation-state attacks. Again, um, based on Microsoft, Russian hackers can infiltrate a computer network in just 18 minutes. And as I said a few minutes ago, there is many stuff to sell at dark web. So this is in general, what's happening in the web application space? After pandemic, as you all know, we shift from um, being in the office, being in the, behind the walls to work remotely. And the importance of web applications became more significant. Did you know that web application API attacks and zero, zero day vulnerabilities have been on an absolute key over in the last nine months? Forget about the whole year. Compared to Q1 in 2021, the web application API attacks has been threefold. When you look at LFIs, the local file inclusion attacks, again, there is a huge increase outperforming structured SQL, basically SQL injection attacks or structured query language injection attacks. And this is and it peaks when it comes to web, ac web attack vector. We spoke about commerce. Again, unfortunately, commerce was the highest targeted vertical with high technology seeing the most growth in 2022 till today, which is end of 2022. Here, here's the figures year by year and unfortunately month, month by month and unfortunately this is getting higher and higher and higher. So, why did we speak about that? As I mentioned at the beginning, to be able to tell you what you should expect next year. I think it's clear that ransomware business models will continue to evolve. It's not going anywhere. Hackers or uh, hacking groups such as Lazarus, even though some of them have been arrested now, will continue to look at new ways to kidnap your data. You're going to read more news about organizations such as Garmin who paid millions of dollars to secure the data or you're going to read some news such as EA Games um, that will refuse to pay the ransom because they trust their backups which was great but they couldn't find out that hackers while they encrypting their networks this, before that, they stole 750 gigabyte data of their source code. When the gaming company refused to pay the ransom, hackers released the source codes in the wild. So it's not just about 
uh, paying or not paying anymore, it's much more than that. The cost per minute, we talked about it. The cost of the, the impact of an organization, we talked about that. Microsoft shared a great report, which I highly recommend you to go and read. It's called Microsoft Digital, uh, Digital Defense Report. Based on them, um, there is a huge business, and unfortunately, there is at least one victim of ransomware uh, out of that seven, remember, which happened in per minute, there is one victim. So please, 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 please go check, recheck your security configurations. Uh, I saw this eyes, yes, I saw some organizations buying a security product and not installing it, but expecting to get protections. Of course, this was a mid-sized organization. Um, the IT was really not IT. They were just uh, people. They had some clue of computers. And um, their idea was buying the product will secure them. I'm not saying that. Look at Verizon Data Breach Report. You will see that misconfiguration attacks are huge. We talk about the impact of phishing. We talk about the impact of zero days. We talked about the impact of ransomware. Uh, and again, the dollar figures are maybe uh, not realistic to you, but when you compare those dollar figures with Verizon Data Breach Report, saying that Verizon itself was breached, unfortunately. So maybe the IT team is not reading their own reports, but it can happen. Um, it's really important to look at these attack vectors and compare with what you have. When did you done last time your red teaming exercise? Do you do penetration testing? Uh, do you use the, the NIST framework or the ISO 27001 PDCA, for example? When do you check on an ongoing basis? Do you know what kinds of security gaps you have? Are you ready for not being a victim to your supply chain attacks? What was a supply chain attack? Let's say you use a third party vendor and we all do use third party vendor. That third party vendor get hacks such as Solovins. While you trust this application, it's come through your organization through this application. And even if you're a cybersecurity company, you could get hacked. And my prediction for 2023 is that supply chain attacks will be increased because we all do security based on products. But hackers know that those products are not regularly updated or even if you updated, um, are not maintained or are not controlled when it comes to security. And as a result, you can get a victim. And hackers will most probably uh, spend more time to hack your vendors and come to your organization through those vendors. What else? Governments are not gonna sit down and wait the organizations to get hacked. I can predict that data privacy laws will be more strict. And this means the fines are going to increase. I'm not talking about the inflation rate and uh, the, fines, the fines getting adjusted based on the inflation rates. I'm talking about having big fines. I think you all know GDPR, right? The European Data Protection Law. And I think you should all know, if you're not by now, about what happened with British Airlines, we, I think, two years back. British airline had a very small incident in the frequent refined number uh, program. I think they had a small incident which only 1,000 of their frequent flyer were affected. Just guess how much the fine was for British Airlines. It was more than $230 million. Why? Because GDPR finds organizations based on their revenue, and this is 4% of their revenue. 
So why not use the budget before an attack happens instead of paying a fine? It's like traffic fines. If you drink, you should not drive. If you drink and drive, hopefully a police officer will stop you and find you before you hit someone else. Or if you speed, you will most probably get fined. So why not uh, follow the speed signs and uh, respect the speed limits? As a, if not, you will get fined. Same with cybersecurity. Instead of getting fined 4% of your revenue, why not uh, getting guidance from your own regulations, following NIST framework or uh, COBALT framework or whatever framework your government recommends and implementing this to minimize the attack practice. I think those are really, really, really important. What else? Uh, is this all? No. Uh, based on Washington Post, I, we talked in the beginning of the Uber attack, if you remember. Uber uh, were hacked a few years ago. It's not just fines that you're going to pay now. Uh, the former CISO of Uber were in jail just late last year in 2022. The person had to go to jail for eight years. He was sentenced to eight years jail for not... Uh, for not... Uh, going to the regulator and uh, telling that they were hacked. Now, as CISOs, we don't have just customer trust, but trust problems. We have also our government uh, fine problems. We can lose our freedom for not doing the right thing. So you might not be a CISO. You might not have a CISO, but you are now responsible for securing your organization, doing the best thing. And when necessary, reporting the breach to the right department of your government. What else? Cloud attacks. Remember, we quickly mentioned about COVID and how COVID changed our world and how web applications became more important. Of course, most web applications are hosted in cloud. Of course, meetings like, such as this one. Some of you do connect via Teams, Microsoft Teams. Some of you will connect in via uh, Cisco or uh, Zoom, whatever. Via the cloud. Means hackers will continue to attack cloud providers because they know most of your applications, most most of your services is now hosted in the cloud. What else? Social engineering. What is social engineering? It is the art of human hacking. I believe social engineering is also not going anywhere. There is a very famous EC Council saying, if you completed the EC Council University Certified Ethical Hacking class, you know that there is no patch for human stupidity. So, joke aside, you can minimize the attack which comes through your 8 layer of OSI. Hold on. Was OSI layer, layer not 7? But I just said 8. Come on, Dr. Oskaya. Since when there is the 8 layer? Yes, the 8 layer is there, which is you, which is me, which is the end users, which is everybody who's using the computers, humans in other terms. We have to also secure them. And don't forget, social engineering is the art of human hacking. And the best way to patch your users is keep them up to date, train them. Um, I wrote a book about it. I'm not saying go buy my book and um, or watch, go do some EC console training or uh, no. Um, what I'm saying is please do some phishing exercise. Please create training based on uh, security awareness training based on the people, not group. So if you use the same video, phishing training video, to train your IT guys and your HR, 
it means you're doing something wrong. Go ahead, create security awareness training based on the roles, based on the departments, based on the organization, and ensure that everybody is aware because hackers will continue to use social engineering attacks, phishing attacks to get into your networks. What else? APIs. We talked about it in the beginning. APIs will cause more and more unforeseen breaches. Unfortunately, it's still going to cost us lots of money. So go ahead and secure your APIs. We talked about password attacks. We talked about brute force attacks. And of course, uh, I quickly mentioned MFA, multi-factor authentication. Uh, I can show you that even my personal um, Twitter, Facebook, Instagram account has MFA beside my web-facing applications, beside my uh, Office 365 password, beside my whatever. So what does this mean? Hackers know you use MFA. Of course, they're going to find, they will try to find a way to reach MFAs. And I believe this is going to be impactful in 2023. What else? Firmware. You all buy some sort of device to protect your organization. Or you have some modems, some um, some hardware to protect your environment. But when did you upgrade the firm uh, in your modem, for example, last time? Is your modem or your uh, routers firmware up to date? Or I know you probably have a Cisco switch somewhere in your organization, which is not supported anymore, which means the firmware is outdated. What kinds of protection do you have against those firmware attacks? If I know that, probably hackers do know that as well. If not, they just learn it now. So be ready of firmware attacks. Know your assets. To be able to protect yourself, you have to know your weak sides. You have to know your strong side. And you have to refocus based on your current state. You have to find the gaps. The gaps that hackers can go through. Don't forget. Hackers are like waters. They will give you the pressure. And even if you have uh, high walls to protect you against the tsunami, tsunami attacks, if there's a crack, hackers will go through to the cracks. So those are what I foresee. Okay, before I go ahead and um, close the session, I want to give you some recommendations. Of course, this is the EC Council University webinar, joined with EC Council Exitium. I'm going to highly recommend you to educate yourself. If you need to do masters, EC Council University has some great master programs, undergraduate programs. If you need some uh, security training, EC Council has some, or if you want some free training such as this one or some product trainings, Exitium Academy has great ones as well. Go ahead and look at those. But the best recommendation that I'm going to give you is change your mindset. Assume that you can get breached any second, any time. If you know that you can get hacked, then you will try to do your best to minimize the impacts, to minimize the attack factors to improve your security. So don't just rely on your team, on your product, on your whatever. Assume if you can get hacked. Assume that you can get hacked. And plan what you can do if you get hacked. Implement defense in depth. Never, ever, ever keep your unvaluable items next to your valuable items. Look, everybody's going to tell you, if you read some recommendations, go implement zero trust. Yes, implement zero trust. But I know implementing zero trust is not that easy, especially if you work in any organization, which is older than 12, 13 years. I bet you still have some legacy applications, which is not cloud supported. 
I bet you have such a huge uh, outdated servers that cannot be in the cloud. Or I bet you have some uh, application servers that you cannot share the details. So what are you going to do? Oh, you have Windows XP. Uh, if as Microsoft, it's easy to say go uh, install Windows 11. But what if if you have an application which only runs on Windows XP? Look, I'm not saying go shut down your business, but I'm saying what I'm saying is at least, as I said a few minutes ago, implement defense in that. And when it comes to zero trust, at least create a greenfield zero trust environment and start moving your most uh, most valuable applications there that that can get hacked or when I say most valuable, uh, maybe uh, most. <laughs> I just forgot the word, uh, you know, uh, maybe the most valuable applications, not valuable applications. So zero trust is important. Going forward, get your software which supports zero trust. Uh, implement security solutions based on zero trust. At least don't be in five years uh, in a state that the application that you install today is not possible to move to zero trust. AI, AI is getting really, really important. Many organizations, many software vendors, many governments started to use AIs, but don't forget, AI is also used by hackers. If you use AI to protect your organization, hackers are gonna use AI to try to hack your organization. There is only one difference between you and the defenders, uh, the hackers, you, you as defenders uh, have to protect thousands of thousands of applications where hackers have to find only one and one um, application to attack. But if you can catch this one application, one at application attack or attack in early stages, you can protect the rest of the attack, the rest of the impact. And in that AI is important. Cyber resilience, as I said, everybody can get hacked. And if you remember the first part of the webinar, I shared very big organization names. Organization with billions of dollars budget. Organizations of who spend billions of cybersecurity, uh, billions of dollars in RD in cybersecurity. But even if they can get hacked, who are we? No problem. Be ready. Remember, extreme mindset, uh, extreme breach mindset. Create a cyber resilience organization. Know how hackers think and try to limit the breach while thinking like a hacker. If you think like a hacker, you will then look at things in a different way. And hopefully this is going to give you some, um, some security, virtual security glasses to look at the defense vector. So an example, if I'm using an Android phone and uh, if I let my organization devices to be, uh, to be, again, I forgot the word. Um, if, if I let um, jail, if, if I let my device to be jailbreak, or if I let my end users to use untrusted application Play Stores, for example, or Apple Store, then I take the risks from the beginning because I know hackers are gonna put millions of raw of applications, even in official Play Stores uh, or official App Stores, so people can get social engineered and install these applications in their phones. And don't forget, this phone is also connected most probably into your network. This phone has most probably business applications. And I know some of the organization, they uh, they give you a business phone as well. That's my Apple phone, by the way. So it, you know, it's not gonna keep you more secure having two different phones. What is gonna keep you more secure is using the right application and the right policies. While DevSecOps is really important, 
I believe it's go it's going to be even more important. It will become business critical in 2023. Please, as I said, have that PDCA mindset, plan, do, check, act, monitor your threats, have a threat monitoring pro uh, process, analyze them, remediate them, deploy your software uh, in a way that you test them first. So I'm not going to speak about those sec ops, but ensure that you have a way to protect the organization and DevSec ops is one of those ways. Go and check these details, please. So everybody talks about EDR. What is the EDR? Endpoint detection response. If you want to learn more about EDR, I have a great course in my YouTube channel. Go, and, go ahead and watch it. So what is an EDR? EDR based on Gartner is today's, as of end of 2022's, beginning of 2023, the must have defense application. But not everybody can spend eight to $90 on EDR. With that, I can proudly say that as Exidium, we made EDR totally free, open source. All that you have to do is go to openedr.com, download the EDR and deploy it into your application, uh, into your network. If you don't know how to use open EDR, we have some great courses at Exidium Academy. Go ahead and watch them. Openedr.com or exitumacademy.com and you will have a free certification program as well. So um, you need to ensure that your endpoint has the emerging and established uh, emerging established uh, defense mechanism to protect them. And OpenEDR can probably give you that. Don't forget, you can you cannot defeat the threats of the present with the tools from tomorrow. So you have to have the right tool to protect your organization. What else? Cyber threat intelligence. It is really, really important. At Exitium, we have Valkyrie, but many other organizations have uh, some open source threat intelligence programs. Please go ahead and check them out. You all know what James Bond does, right? The KG, MI6 agent. You all heard about KGB, uh, CIA, MIT, or uh, other Mossad, all those secret agencies. You know, in the movies, those, you know, will send to some other government, to other places, the spies. They try to collect information which is against the countries to protect the countries. It's the same idea. Cyber threat intelligence is not creating a spy, but utilizing the intelligence what's happening outside to protect your organization. Remember, in the beginning, I talked about the attacks, about victims. So if you work in a telecom company and you don't know about how healthcare in Australia was hacked, you're in trouble. I met Many banking CIOs, CISOs, they never heard about Carbonac before. Honestly, I was hitting my head into the wall. Like, how are you in a CIO or CISO who never heard of Carbonac? What was Carbonac? One of the biggest attack vectors in 2015, which hit more than 100 banks. And $1 billion was stolen to that malware. If you sitting in a chair as a CIO or CISO or whatever, and you never heard about this attack, which means the bank has no clue how to protect the, the, themselves. But more importantly, it also shows that you are not using the right uh, cyber threat intelligence. At least that intelligence can help you to show what's happening out there and you can use the same way you know you can learn from those uh, mistakes and uh, use the same protection ways to protect your organization maybe get the hashes of the attack and scan it against you your organization to see if you have uh, the similar signature in your environment again cyber threat intelligence it is really really important what else is important of course vulnerability management but vulnerability management which is risk-based. We saw that many organizations were hit through vulnerabilities, through zero days. 
all right, zero days gonna happen. They are not that that common per minute, one or a few, but attaching, being up to date, it is really important. We know hackers do attack to this. We know ransomware's biggest cause is still vulnerabilities, which means you do have to have a proper vulnerability management, which is based on risk. What else? Don't forget, in cybersecurity, building a strategy is essential. As a IT professional, cybersecurity professional, you should not spend too much time on what you are strong. But instead, you should continue to focus on finding your weaknesses and closing them. No pain, no gain. You cannot go to gym and watching others and gain health. The best way to uh, get healthy in a gym is going, sweating, working hard. This is the only way. Or if you want to lose weight, you cannot just go and um, to fast food chain and keep eating whatever you can find. You should watch what you're eating. You should exercise. Then hopefully I will lose some weight. You will lose some weight if you want to. And my last but not least train, uh, recommendation, security awareness training. Remember we talked about that, but I wanted to, you, I wanted to remind you one more time that it is really important because Cybersecurity is not just the CEO's or CISO's responsibility. It's my job as CISO to build a cyber culture that everyone in the organization understands cyber risk and contributes on mitigating them. So regardless what your role is in your organization, help, help the organization to be more secure. Try uh, not to click on everything what you see. Try to keep your uh, hardware software up to date. If you are suspicious something, report it. Like in an airport, you know, you keep hearing this announcement. Uh, if you find unattended luggage, please report it. They keep asking you, did you, uh, did you pack your luggage yourself or did someone else pack it for you? So, please, cyber security is like that. Please ensure that you can protect what you can. And if you're suspicious of something, let the right team know. This might be false positive. I don't mind to look at some false positive, uh, false information instead of uh, uh, a possible threat they click and uh, affects my organization. With this, I'm coming to the end of my presentation. But if you're watching this webinar offline, uh, because very shortly, as EC Council University and um, it's the Council University Cyber Talks. I'm going to start answering some questions. We're going to give some books away. But if you are watching this offline, please go to exitium.com, CISO sign book dash exitium, fill up the form, and everybody who fills up the form will be eligible to get a free book. Or what you have to do that, of course, put your business email. Yes, I know, once you put your business email, it is really not free. You will be subscribing to a newsletter but you can always unsubscribe if you want to. So free book for all of you. Again, thank you very much for watching this presentation. I would like to thank EC Council University and EC Council for inviting me again to deliver this presentation. And again, I would like to thank my employer, Exitium, for giving, uh, for covering the books and uh, helping me, you know, empowering me to be part of the community. And if you want to be in touch, don't forget, all that you have to do is uh, keep in touch via social media. And those are my contact details. Thank you again for joining us today. If you have any feedback, please do not forget to share it with us. Thank you very much. Happy New Year and talk to you soon. Bye-bye.